Hi there, everyone. I'm Jake Perrine, lead trainer at warpacademy.com. I'm excited to share with you a full length tutorial from my brand new Ableton Live 9 Jumpstart course. In this action packed course, we explore Live 9 in depth across four weeks. It's the ultimate way to learn Live 9 fast. This would be a great moment to have a quick aside about some more file management stuff. You may have noticed that we've been adding audio files to our set that come from somewhere else on the hard drive. They're not part of the project folder. They're part of a different project folder, in fact. When you do this, those files stay put. They're not copied automatically into your samples folder. That would create a lot of duplicates around your hard drive that you may or may not want to have, which is good. However, if we tried to move this project folder to somewhere else, like say give it to a friend, or put it on an external hard drive or something like that, the audio files that we added to this set are not going to be copied with it because they're not in this folder, right? They're still elsewhere on my hard drive. Well, there's a function inside of Live that will remedy this situation, and it's called Collect All and Save. By doing this, Live will copy any files that are external to the project folder into the project folder so that you can move, copy, or archive your project to some other location and know that all the files that you used in these sets are contained within that folder for later use. Let's do that now. I'm going to go File, Collect All, and Save. And Live asks me if I want to move any or all of these files listed from these different locations into the project folder. And if you're going to archive or move this file to somewhere else, it's perfectly advisable to leave all of these checked and just say OK. And I'm going to do that now. And now let's switch over into Finder. And here I am at our My Exercise project folder. And in here you'll see the sets that we've created so far. And inside the Samples folder, I can navigate down into here and find, there they are, the three audio files that I've used in these sets are now also inside my Samples folder. Okay, this isn't done automatically for you. You have to initiate this command yourself when you're ready to. If you don't plan to move your sets, then you don't necessarily have to do this. If you don't plan to put them on some other device or send them to somebody else, you may never need to actually do this. So as you continue to work with Live, you will no doubt start to amass a sample library. Files like the Sounds to Sample folder which are the raw materials that you're going to work with. Again, kind of akin to a painter's paint. The live library has a lot in it, but everyone else has the same library that you do, so invariably you're going to create, find, or purchase your own samples over time. And I do not save them to the live library. I use separate drives for these because I have a fairly large sample library. In fact, I have the Mac operating system on one drive, a entire physical hard drive dedicated to my sample library, and then another drive for my live projects and any other work that I do. This frees up the Mac OS drive to keep running the programs and the operating system independently of the other jobs that Live will ask it to do. All my samples are streaming from the sample library drive, and then while I'm recording or playing back any audio files, inside of a live set that's coming from the work drive. So by doing this, I've distributed the load of work that I'm asking the computer to do across three different drives, and it works quite well. And so in my projects, I don't use collect all and save unless I'm archiving or sending my set to somebody else. That's when you need to do collect all and save. Otherwise, I'd have my sample library on one drive and parts of my sample library repeated again on the work drive, and that's unnecessary. 